Hello and welcome to my video on urban settlements. We're going to be looking at urban areas being cities and towns um, and what can be found in each of those. Um, so in this video we'll be looking at different land use zones um, that you can find within a city. So let's start with land use zones, these being areas that have a specific purpose um, and areas that we are familiar with um, in our cities. We can probably think about the city that we're in. Um, so looking at this land use zone model, uh, we've got the CBD, the Central Business District, in the middle. Um, you'll find light industry and low income residential housing. Um, then we've got our middle income residential housing, heavy industry, informal settlements, high income residential, shopping centers, place of business. Um, we'll usually have new par business parks um, and new housing developments. Um, so these should be familiar to you in your own cities. Um, this is a photograph of Johannesburg. And this is an example of a central business district. So it's the area that a city started growing from. Generally found in the centre, it has a lot of very tall buildings because the land is very expensive in these areas. Um, lots of transport routes leading to it. Um, and a lot of finance and retail businesses all there. So that's Cape Town CBD. You can see the harbour and you can see the roads leading into the city. The problems that we find with the CBD are things like crime at night because there's depopulation, people going home, they're not at work, uh, noise and air pollution, traffic congestion, and it's very expensive to buy land there. Then uh, moving on to our residential, we have four different types of residential, our high income, middle income, low income and informal settlements. The photograph that you're seeing here um, is in Workarp in Cape Town and it is an example of middle income. Uh, and this area has access to goods and services, it's comfortable, meets basic needs, and it's close to businesses and transport routes, so it's not super expensive, but it's not um, lacking anything either. Uh, high income, income areas are uh, have access to services and goods, they're far away from the city's industrial areas because, well, rich people don't like things that smell or look bad. Um, so they'll often be on a steep slope with beautiful views. And it doesn't need to be on a major transport route because most people will have their own private um, transport options, cars, motorbikes, um, scooters, that kind of thing. Low income area, we're looking at um, areas close to the CBDs or close to the industrial areas because it's expensive to travel to work and so uh, if there is uh, work nearby then you will find people living close by. It's planned so there are basic facilities like your water and your electricity and roads but little beyond that. Um, then the last one we're going to look at is informal settlements. So informal settlements, those are on the outskirts of the city and they're often a um, knock-on of massive amounts of urbanization. That means people moving to the cities. Um, in South Africa, um, when the pass laws were abolished in 1986, uh, there was a lot of um, urbanization from the what was known as the homelands. Um, and as a result of this, uh, we have quite a lot of informal settlements, particularly in South Africa, where people don't have access to basic needs because um, with the mass amount of urbanization, with free movement, uh, the government wasn't able to keep up with the demand. So then we're going to move on to our heavy and light industry. Um, we've got ones that uh, don't require a lot of space and one that does. Um, so first we're going to be looking at our light industry. So this generally we can find these close to the CBD if you remember the land use so model from the beginning. It's the light green one to the left of the CBD there. It doesn't make too much noise or air pollution and doesn't need a lot of space so you'll find things like textile factories or newspaper or book printers. Um, where things need to be made, um, there are jobs available, but it doesn't require huge amounts of space. It can be done in warehouses within the city. 
The other type of industry that we have is heavy industry. So this is industry that creates a lot of noise and air pollution, requires a large amount of space. Um, and these factories will require access to water, they'll require transport routes for their products to um, be shipped out and to get their natural resources in, um, and they need access to labour. So these heavy industry areas are places like Uteneg outside Port Elizabeth, um, where they build a lot of cars. So those are the needs and requirements for these kinds of areas, and you don't find people living very close by. Um, our next one that we're going to be talking about is the rural urban fringe. So you can see in this picture we've got some quad bikes in some open space. Um, and our rural urban fringe is a, a space on the edge of the city, around the city. And it's activities and land uses that need a lot of space or they make a lot of noise. Um, and so people don't want them close to their residences where they live. Um, so the the land on the edge of the cities is really cheap and what that comes down to is if you need to build a nursery or a paintball area or cemeteries or you want to build a big factory you're going to go where the land is cheaper um, and then there's very little development um, very small population um, so that's what you're expecting on the outskirts of the city now if you're going hmm but there is a cemetery inside the city. What's it doing there? What you'll probably find, like for example, West Park Cemetery in Johannesburg, is that that used to be the edge of the city. And as the city has grown, it's absorbed the activities that used to be the rural urban fringe into the city. So what I'd like you to do now is take, for, take a moment and think about your school, where you are. Um, or if you're watching this at home, where you would normally go to school. And what kind of area do you think your school falls into in terms of the land use zone? Which land use zone do you see every day when you go into school? Um, and what problems would you have you noticed about these particular land use zones? So, for example, where um, I work is in Rosebank. Um, in Johannesburg and I've noticed that there is a lot of traffic in that area which is a downside to where I work. Um, so what about your school? So I hope you learned something about urban settlements today. Um, if you have any questions you can um, pop a comment below and uh, I'll see you for the next one. Bye!